Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got Ed with me again, who you will have seen in the banking video and a bunch of vlogs. Hello. <laughs> and today we're gonna to be talking about all of the tech that we carry. As you guys probably know, if you've been watching this channel, we live full-time online. So everything that we have here fits in our suitcase. Ed's suitcase is probably about 50% tech. <laughs> yeah, I don't bring many clothes with me. So first of all, let's hear about your work setup. All right. Well, I got my uh, MacBook Air and then the Roost stand. Ooh. And I've been looking for a stand for a while, which is actually portable. And it's the only stand at the time that I, I managed to find that was portable. And it's pretty amazing. It pops out like this. Um, super lightweight, pretty, uh, pretty sturdy, and obviously very easy to collapse down and fit in your backpack, which is the main advantage of that. You also need to buy a keyboard. Just a Bluetooth keyboard, standard, this one's a Logitech one, seems pretty good, uh, it was given to me as a gift. Um, and then a trackpad as well. I don't know, once you've got used to using the trackpad on a laptop, I find it's, I find it's tricky to go back to a mouse and I use like all the quick gestures on the trackpad for MacBook as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, got to be done. The, the new trackpads are really expensive. Um, so if you're trying to get a, a cheap one or a bit more of a deal, I would recommend just going with the old Mac trackpad. You want one of the Apple official ones just because other ones are, I've heard that other ones are pretty bad and they're laggy. We spend most of the year on the road, uh, mm. so it's not really good to be working so many hours a day, just always hunched over a laptop in some co-working space. Yeah. So I thought it'd be good to have essentially like a desktop monitor, but obviously it's it's difficult to bring that with you. Although I do have one now as well. So. Yeah, so this is kind of the next thing that you bought about a month ago is a yeah. whole, I'll, obviously it's too big to hold up, but I'll include a cutaway of it. So a whole big monitor. Yeah, and this is just a very recent purchase. And it's, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's good to have a desktop computer when you're working so many hours a day. And we just pack it in the main suitcase just with some kind of padding around and hope for the best. So far it's done three flights and been totally fine. Yeah, so it's not very digital nomad -y. It just makes work a lot better. So we figure it's worth it if you're, if you're staying somewhere for more than just a couple of weeks. It's the most digital nomad -y screen if there is such a thing because you can kind of take it apart and it does fit into a suitcase, which a lot of monitors won't do. So the base comes away from the screen, so it kind of flat packs. Yeah, I don't have any RSI problems or anything, but I just thought, like, it makes work so much better. Yeah. Like once, and once you're using like a big monitor, you realize, okay, this is actually pretty awesome. And yeah. this is why people normally work with big monitors. The monitor is definitely not portable, but this is totally portable. And yeah. it means you can have a, a raised monitor. Um, and so then my work setup, I have a MacBook Pro rather than the Air because I do a lot of video editing with Udemy and with YouTube and my Air just couldn't handle it, it kept crashing. So I have the Pro. Um, and then I have a lot of external hard drives. Um, this is one of my favorites because it has a big capacity, but it's still quite physically small. So I carry probably about 10 terabytes of storage around with me, but that's because I do so much video editing um, and I like to keep the files in all the different versions for now. So I have external hard drives, which are constantly plugged in. And then my only ergonomic thing is I've got a Bluetooth mouse, um, which has a little USB that plugs into the computer. I was getting kind of RSI type stuff in my wrist from the constant scroll on my trackpad. So I've got a computer now so that my wrist isn't kind of always tense. And I found that to be a lot, lot better. Um, and it was only like 10 pounds or something, definitely worth it. That's all I have for my computer setup. So then my next thing is my headphones. These have actually been sent to me recently. Um, so they are my first Bluetooth, like wireless headphones. They do have a wire if the battery's dead or if you want to use a wire. Um, but yes, yeah, so they're by Studio um, and they're really awesome. I got the, um, the marble add-on to make them super chic, but um, yeah, they're Swedish. They ship worldwide. They arrived to me in Australia in about four days from Sweden, so they're super good. Um, so yeah, that's my current headphone setup. It's a big progression for me from the free Apple headphones, that's for sure. So a little kind of life hack that we like to bring is a HDMI cable. So at the moment, Ed's using it to plug his monitor into his laptop, but we originally got it just to be able to watch on the TVs in our hotel rooms or Airbnbs. Um, so it means that we can plug Netflix on our laptop into the big TV, which is a much better experience than watching it on your laptop. Back to sound tech for a minute, and we got this speaker called the Boom Swimmer, I think. And 
it's completely waterproof, which isn't quite as good as it sounds. It means you can take it in the shower and listen to music while you're showering. So that's the reason I we use it, it to listen to podcasts in the morning sometimes in the shower um, and we also use it similar to the film stuff like if we're watching Netflix and we want better quality sound than just laptop speakers um, then we use it for that it kind of connects to pretty much everything it's good for road trips in the car you can kind of have people's phones bluetoothing in so I think it's well worth getting it was really cheap thought I'll show you my headphones as well just because Louise showed hers mine are much less interesting <laughs> I'll um, do close-ups of all of it don't worry <laughs> No, people need to see the headphones. <laughs> okay, mine are much less interesting, they're pretty normal. Uh, maybe this isn't even going to make the final cut, because I don't know the brand. Oh yeah, uh, it's Betron. I assume it's called Betron. Anyway, they're like, um, I think they're probably one of these FBA guys, but the reason I got them is because they seem to have an indestructible cable and I'm like constantly breaking cables. The cable feels almost like string. Then a few kind of more, I guess, boring, like basic things, but actually we find really life-changing is you've seen this on my channel before. This is my power pack. Um, it has two USB outputs. I hardly ever have to recharge it. It charges my phone a ton of times. It's pretty heavy, but it's an essential. And then an everything to everything converter. This one, you can put anything in and you can get anything to come out. You can kind of pick what output you want. They're quite expensive. They're kind of maybe like 20, 25 pounds. Um, so worth it. Yeah, so worth it. They're actually quite hard to find and everything to everything. You can normally get like everything to UK or everything to US um, or everything to Europe. But all to all is quite hard to find. We got ours in TK Maxx, um, but I think you could probably get them on Amazon. I'll include a link down below if I can find anything. And a couple of things that are slightly less techy, I suppose. Um, my watch, which at the moment I'm not wearing because it's a few links too big, um, but I got sent this by Yord and I really like them because um, they're made of wood. So they're kind of like ethically sourced. You can look at all their sourcing um, information online of where your watch has come from. And this one, crazily, isn't dyed. It comes like this. This tree is actually pink. It's called purple wood or something I'll have it up on the screen um, so yeah I think that's pretty amazing and then I travel with a hairdryer and I love this one because it's really small but it's just as powerful as a normal hairdryer I actually got it in a charity shop for about three pounds um, but now even when I go home back to the UK I don't have a big hairdryer anymore because this is just plenty powerful enough and it's pretty rare to find one that's small enough that does that and now Ed's favorite thing so this is the DJI spark um, and it's DJI's smallest camera drone, I think. Um, and certainly the camera, camera quality is pretty amazing. DJI do some fantastic things. We just wanted something um, for me to essentially fly around for fun and take some, some video for Louise's channel as well. At Digital Nomad Girl, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> I think if you're getting a drone and if you want to take uh, video, then it's got to be DJI really. Mm. We had a um, Phantom 3 standard before this. That was insane. We flew it like two kilometers away. So, And after 300 meters, it's lost as a tiny speck in the distance. But it was a lot of fun. The downside was it was a big drone. Mm. And this is essentially a DJI Phantom 3 standard, but it's small. And, and for us, like there was no way we were going to take the Phantom 3 traveling with us. The Mavic is better. The range is much better. Um, but the Spark is, the, the video footage is surprisingly good. For me, the only reason I would upgrade is because the Mavic has a much better range. So then I guess the final things to talk about are what I'm using to film. Um, so I have the Canon G7X, very like standard blogger equipment, the same as everybody has. I have it on the Joby tripod, which I love. I've tried a lot of knockoff versions on Amazon and I've broken all of them. So I finally decided to invest in the Joby, even though it's much more expensive. And then at the moment, I'm experimenting with my Rode VideoMic Pro microphone. Um, I've bought a converter that means I can plug it into my laptop. Um, so we'll see if the sound in this video is any better than previous ones. Please let me know if there's anything that you really love that you think I've missed out that I should give a try to, or if you want a specific review on any of these products in particular, or any more information, I'll include links to everything in the description box. Um, but don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys in my next video. And thanks to Ed for coming on. Bye. Bye. Okay. I need to get my hair perfect. I need to get it YouTube perfect. Okay. Greetings! <laughs> I'll hide this microphone, but don't.
I'll just sit like this. No, and just leave. I actually think I'm going to put it here now. I'll just shout. Say, people can hear me all the way over there. Okay. All right then. Ready? No. Do you have? Okay, go. Okay. Don't forget to look at the lens, by the way, because oh. I always forget. I'm looking at the lens. Okay. Hey. That's um, a good one. Boom, swimmer. <laughs> Swim that boom. Of course, don't forget to subscribe, um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. And I'm going to get some great drone footage for you guys. <laughs> um, I'm going to do the bye one more time as well, in case that turned out to be too late. You can just like, say bye with me. Yeah. Oh. Do you that, like that one? That'll be perfect. Okay. okay. Yes, do the bye one more time. Okay. Bye.